Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Shepherd's Pie. Today we're making Shepherd's Pie in celebration of St. Patty's Day. We're gonna be infusing some really great flavors a little bit of Guinness gravy, a little bit of Irish cheddar. So a lot of celebration going on. If you're not familiar with the shepherd's pie, you may have also heard it called a cottage pie. Cottage pie traditionally made with beef, shepherd's pie traditionally made with lamb. We're actually gonna blend the two today and then we've got some other special stuff in store. We're cooking on the Kamado Joe. Let's jump right into smoking our meat. So what we're working with today, we've got about a pound and a half of lamb shoulder steaks, about a pound and a half of beef chuck roast. Like I said, traditionally, shepherd's pie is lamb. We're gonna use a little bit of both today. I like the blend of flavors, uh, but really when it comes to shepherd's pie, you could be using whatever meat is left over in your refrigerator, same for veggies. Um, obviously we're making this from scratch today, so we kind of get to pick and choose what's going in. Um, and we're gonna start off by hitting these with a little bit of oil and then some seasoning. So we're starting with a base layer of the Oak Ridge Barbecue Spogos. That's salt, pepper, onion, garlic, and other spices, but basically a really nice savory base. Uh, and then we're gonna hit it with some of the California tri-tip. Uh, from Cattleman's Grill. You guys know that's one of my favorites. It's just a great steak rub. Also some of the same savory flavors, but also adds in some red bell pepper and stuff like that. So we'll do our finer layer first. That'll kind of adhere to the surface of the meat. And then we've got the California tri-tip, which has much more texture to it. And I like that contrast, some big chunks on the surface as well as that finer stuff that really just melts into the meat. Now let me give you guys an idea of where we're going today, just a little bit of a roadmap. As I said before, we're cooking on the Kamado Joe. We're gonna stabilize that at about 250 degrees, put a couple chunks of wood in there so we can get some really nice smoke on our beef and on our lamb. We're going to cook that until we've got good color on the outside, then wrap it up super tight in foil so it can kind of braise in its own juices and start to break down all that fat and connective tissue. Once that's super tender, we'll pull it off. We're gonna get into a skillet, start cooking up our veggies, make a little bit of Guinness gravy. We'll incorporate our meat, mashed potatoes on top, Irish cheddar back on the grill, hotter this time to finish everything off just to get it nice and brown, and that'll be it. I'm gonna slide a plate in here create an indirect cooking zone. All right, we got the smoke rolling now. The grill's come up to temperature, so we're gonna place our lamb and our beef here to do some smoking. Our meat's been smoking for about an hour and 15 minutes now. Plenty of time to soak up that smoke flavor and the outside's looking really nice, so we're gonna wrap it up in foil to finish. It's a really nice color on these. That's what we're going for. Not terribly concerned about internal temperature right now. Although this is probably in the 170 range. Get that wrapped up nice and tight. And then we'll do the same thing with our lamb. We'll just stack these together, wrap them up tight. All right, I'm gonna open this up just a little bit so we can try and pop this up to about that 350 degree range. Uh, this will just kind of expedite the cooking process. And that's also a little closer to where we wanna be when we actually get the skillet on later. So we might as well go ahead and start increasing the temperature. Now, while we wait for that meat to finish cooking, we're gonna go ahead and prep the rest of the veggies for our shepherd's pie. All right, so let's take a look at what we're working with today. We've got a yellow onion, we've got some carrots, uh, just some frozen peas. For our herbs, we've got some fresh rosemary and thyme. Of course, we're gonna have some garlic in there. And then we're gonna kind of build this gravy using beef stock, the flour to thicken things. We've got a little tomato paste, and of course, our Guinness. And this is a really cool piece. This is a whiskey-infused Irish cheddar. Now, we're going to treat these uh, ingredients just a little bit different than normal today. Normally, you'd see me just go ahead and dice this up. Uh, which gives some nice texture to the shepherd's pie, but we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna actually grate our onion and our carrot today. 
So this will be a much finer texture, and what that does is it really allows these flavors to just sort of melt into the pie and into the meat, uh, and really gives it flavor all the way through without adding too much extra texture, and that's okay. All right, so we're shooting for about one cup of grated onion. So we're gonna do the exact same thing with the carrots once we get these peeled, grate it down, one cup of grated carrots. Now we're gonna take our garlic and do the same thing, just a finer grate on that. We're looking for about one tablespoon total. Now our Irish whiskey cheddar, that's going in with our mashed potatoes and then on top, uh, as for the mashed potatoes, we've got three pounds of russets that I've peeled. Just gonna go boil those off until they're tender. Well, it's been about two hours total that our meat's been cooking and it's fully cooked now. It's up above 200 degrees on the internal temperature, which is great because something like the shoulder or the chuck that's got a lot of fat in it, you wanna be able to break all of that down. But we're ready to pull these off of the grill now. I'll give you a look at that lamb there. If we're poking it, it's super soft. If you're checking the internal temperature, 210 degrees now, and that should come right off of that bone. Same thing with that chuck. Probing pretty tender. Again, right around 210 degrees. All right, we're gonna add just a little bit more charcoal to our coal bed just to make sure that we get there because we're gonna wanna crank this thing up now. Open it wide open. So maximum airflow now should bump that temperature up, especially with that fresh charcoal in there once that gets going. And we've got a little time because we have to go finish building our shepherd's pie. So now over medium heat and our 12 inch lodge skillet, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of oil. You could definitely use butter for this as well. It doesn't affect it a great deal, so whatever you like. And then we're gonna add our carrots and our onions. And since we grated these instead of dicing them, they're gonna cook a little bit faster than normal, so keep an eye on them. And I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more of that California tri-tip seasoning. All right, so we're gonna get the lamb off these bones while our veggies are cooking away, and we'll kind of give this a dice. Pulling away from the bone pretty easy. That's what we're looking for. Also got our bit of chuck here. We are in Kansas after all. I guess maybe you could call this a Shep, Shep cottage pie. A little bit of both. Check out the smoke ring on our beef. That looks really nice. All right, now our onions have kind of just melted away. Our carrots are softening up as well. So we're gonna move on to adding our garlic. We've also got our fresh rosemary, our fresh thyme. And then we've got a little bit of tomato paste. And we wanna get all of that stuff kind of incorporated, moving around. And then we're gonna add some flour to help thicken everything up. So we give that just a minute to get that garlic started on the cook and then we're gonna add a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Now this is gonna gum up pretty quick here. You'll see stuff starts to stick to the bottom. That's okay, we're gonna deglaze here shortly, but we gotta cook some of the rawness out of this flour. All right, so we give that about one or two minutes, moving it constantly so we don't scorch anything to the bottom, and then we can start to add our liquid to build our Guinness gravy. We're gonna start off with one cup of beef stock. As we get that incorporated, especially with that flour in there, you're gonna see things start to thicken up. 
All right, check that out. See these bubbles that are happening? They're getting bigger. Everything's getting thicker. Now we're gonna add our Guinness. Now one cup is what we're calling for today, which leaves you uh, about a third of a beer just to enjoy yourself. But of course you're gonna wanna have to buy that whole six pack to get that one cup of beer. All right, we're gonna bring this up to a simmer and it will start to thicken. And we'll add our remaining ingredients. All right, so this is thickened up really nicely into this rich Guinness gravy. We're ready to add our meat back to it. And get all of that goodness in there. Even these little crusty bits that are kind of hard, once you get that back into this gravy, they're gonna soak up some of that moisture and soften up a bit as this cooks, uh, as this cooks on the grill a second time. And all this meat kind of gets rehydrated in that process. So those little dried and crunchy bits, they just become added flavor, almost extra seasoning. We can actually take this off the heat now. We'll turn that off. We'll add one cup of peas. Again, we're just kind of throwing in some veggies here. These are pretty traditional for this dish, but you can use whatever you like. If you got some extra veggies sitting in the fridge, some green beans left over from last night, Go ahead and throw those in there too. I mean, this is a dish that's really great with leftover foods. Whatever you have in the fridge, you can put in there. Of course, we're doing it all from scratch today, which takes a little bit more effort. Every step we've taken today is designed to make this taste as good as possible. It's smoky, it's got that seasoned beef, the seasoned lamb, uh, all these veggies handpicked the way we grated down the onions so they would really melt into this gravy. But that doesn't mean it's the absolute way it should be done. It's just cooking. So take your liberties, take some chances, see what you like. All right, I'm smoothing this out. All we've got to do now is put together our mashed potatoes and get it on top of here. I've got our three pounds of potatoes cooked off. They're tender, they're ready to be mixed up. And so that's all there's left to do is let's just put everything together. All right, I'm using a potato ricer today to mash these down, but of course you can do it however you like to make your mashed potatoes. I just really like the texture that you get from the ricer. All right, nice and light and fluffy. Now we've got that whiskey infused Irish cheddar. There's about four ounces of it here and I'm gonna put half of it in with the potatoes and the other half we'll put on top. We've also got three quarter cup of milk with two tablespoons of butter that we've melted together. I'm gonna to hit it with a little bit of our noble smoked salt. This is the hickory smoked salt. We can adjust this later, but we'll get some in there to get started. And then that ricer makes it so light and fluffy that you can just kind of mix this by hand. One last thing we wanna to add to this. Now first, let me get a taste. Pretty close, we could use just a little bit more salt. And then that one last thing, we've got an egg yolk. We're gonna add that and mix it together. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add just a little bit extra richness to it. And it also browns pretty nicely, which is cool. When you get everything incorporated and get your shepherd's pie on the grill, you want some nice browning on top of the potatoes. Now, before I get the potatoes on here, I'm just gonna make sure to get a taste and See if I like where the seasonings are. Mm. Could also use just a touch of salt. All right, so we're just gonna go on a dollop at a time, spreading this out evenly. If you throw it all on at once, chances are you're gonna end up mixing it into the filling rather than putting it on top of the filling. All right, so once we've kind of got that evenly distributed, just gonna smooth everything out.
All right, to finish everything off, we're just gonna do a nice little design in here, a little cross hatch. You could do however you like it. You could just kind of tease everything up, but uh, when you put a little hash into it, a little cross hatch like we're doing here, it actually allows you to create just a little bit more texture on top, and it looks really pretty. This may be humble peasant food, but it doesn't mean we can't make it look pretty. And then, like I said, we're just going to finish this off with a little bit more of that whiskey-infused Irish cheddar on top. Not necessary, but you make up your own rules when you're cooking your own shepherd's pie. Now we brought that grill temperature up to about 400 to 425 degrees before we went back to indirect setup. That's the same way we were cooking before, and that's the same way we're gonna finish this out. But we'll go ahead and leave that wide open for the airflow so that we can create as much heat as possible. What's gonna happen is as that heat comes up over the dome, it should start to brown the top of the potatoes, bring everything else up to temperature, and that's what we're looking for in the finished product. Everything should be warmed through. The sauce, the gravy will be bubbling around the sides of the skillet and we'll have a little bit of browning on top. Well, it's been about 45 minutes, and what I did was I waited until I saw the steam coming out from the edges of the potatoes to tell me that that filling underneath was hot. And then what I did was I shut this thing down. I actually closed the cap, which in the long run will drop your temperature, but what it does in the short term is it traps all of that heat at the top, which helps to brown off the top of our shepherd's pie. So you can see we're getting some really nice browning here on the top now. That really lovely shine partially due to that egg yolk that we added in there. This guy's ready to come off of here. All right, I'm gonna crack into it. Ooh, nice cheesy crust on the top. Love it. A nice tender lamb right there. Finish that off with just a little parsley on top. All right, let's get a really good bite. The whole cross section, our crunchy, cheesy top to the meat, to the sauce. Mmm. Oh, man. Good Guinness gravy. That's pretty good. That is some true Irish comfort food. What better way to celebrate than a bottle of Guinness? Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to go check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. I'll also make sure that they're listed in the video description underneath the video you're watching right now. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.